Hi, hobby friends. Do you hear that? It's the call of the many-armed god. Yes, indeed, with 10th edition right around the corner, I discovered a little burgeoning gene stealer cults army lurking in the sewers under my display shelves, and a little further inspection turned up this imposing chap. His minions will have to wait a little longer before they get any painting table time, but I did fancy getting Bossman here spruced up, so let's look at the process for him. Over his black prime, I covered just about everything with a coat of primary red. Traffic red from Molotow in this case. I'm going for a custom splinter fleet on this one, tentatively named High Fleet Anthropophage, and red will make a great base for both the main character's colour scheme and, well, the base. I still want some shading and depth though, so into the airbrush it goes some Prussian blue ink, and on that goes as a shadow colour spraying up from below. A quick rinse of the airbrush and a refill, this time with primary yellow, and if this process is feeling sort of familiar, welcome back to the channel. Yes, we are performing more or less the same steps from my head painting video, but over the whole beastie this time. My homebrew idea for High Fleet Anthropophage is that they've glutted themselves on such an enormous amount of human biomass, they've turned human colours. Is it the most nuanced idea? No, but this is 40k my friend, we don't do nuance here. As you can see, over the underpainting goes a gentle but more or less ubiquitous cover of a light peach. The yellow underpainting gets his top surfaces looking a little warmer and light, and the blue shading transforms into rich skin tone shadows. Be nice to have just a smidge more definition and variation here though, so let's bump up the highest lights with some pure white. All of this is going to be knocked way, way down by later steps, so it's good to go a little further than you think looks right. Even more variation now, using earth tone inks to gently shift the hues here and there. I used raw sienna and raw umber, but any transparent earthy tones will do. This step adds loads of very subtle visual information that I think really sells the skins. Time to get oily. As with the heads, we are eschewing slavish adherence to realism in the name of pop and pow, and going with a full-blown quinacridone magenta oil wash. And since this guy is full-on alien, I am going to really let that wash cure up before cleaning him. Incidentally, whoever is first to spot and comment with the <clears throat> totally intentional modelling error I made when building this guy gets 300 free imaginary internet points. So when those oils are looking pretty dry but are still shiftable, in I went with my little cotton buds cleaning upper surfaces and gently smooshing about until my gradients looked nice and smooth. You'll notice I did keep off the carapace and claws with this wash though. We have other designs on those bits. Before we get there, just a super quick metallic base with a dry brush on the pipe and a swish of pastel yellow on the rocky bits of the base too. Much later on, this got a black brown oil wash to tone things down a little and give us some more definition. Time for the carapace saga. Why Saga? Because I thought I knew what I was doing, but I in fact did not. All turned out okay in the end, but let's go through the slightly winding route I took to get there. The first stage was some pre-highlighting with white. We're going for that classic nid scratchy edges look here, and this sort of pre-highlighting is something I've done on other projects and been quite happy with. All it really involves is going in with some opaque whites to do your initial highlight stage, and then slathering on a contrast style paint. However, not all contrast style paints are made equal, and this technique works way better with something a little more transparent like yellow, or with a much bigger value contrast between the base colour and the highlight. 
Add to that a late stage change of direction for the carapace that you'll see in a second and, well, those pre-highlights were pretty meaningless in the end. Ho-hum, at least it was just on this one guy and not like a whole 2000 point list of nids. Minor missteps aside, he is coming together. Next job is filling in those... I don't even know what these things are to be honest, but they are going to get a nice coat of bloody red contrast paint to make them look like exposed flesh because, frankly, I think that sounds pretty gnarly and cool. The in no way intellectual property infringing ovipositor toothy tongue thing got a fleshy pink base coat to make it look well, like a tongue, and the claws got a first pass made with a deep, cool brown colour, pretty close to black in the context of all those light flesh tones. Gradual additions of white, some blended layers, scratchy highlights, and a final coat of skeleton horde contrast paint all came together to build some rather dangerous looking talons. With that done, and feeling a little better about the carapace pre-highlight waste of time, I jumped in with a regular layering highlight technique on those edges. Little did I know I was actually just pre-highlighting again. Back spines got the same treatment as the top spines, just in an ever so slightly lighter shade, and he's coming together now, but I'm definitely starting to feel like something is a bit off here. He's not quite right. First thing I like to do when I'm feeling off about a scheme is just to push it a little harder. You'd be amazed what a few focused highlights or a little recess pin lining will do to lift a model. But even after finishing a pass of edge highlights on the pink bits and some highlights on those flesh vent things as well, I still wasn't really feeling it. In retrospect, the problem was pretty obvious. That brown carapace just was not working. It's a bit of a funny hue to try and match to the cool magenta skin, and there isn't nearly enough value contrast to sell it either. Not too hard to solve though, thankfully. With some of this rather pleasing Black Lotus Express paint from Vallejo, we can pretty easily get things back on track. Okay, zooming towards the finish line now, we just need to add a big effect I've been putting off, the malevolently glowy psychic brain. While you watch me futz and fiddle with that, I just want to say a super thank you to all these lovely supporters zooming up your screen now. Their contributions over on Patreon allow me to invest in all the gubbins and potions that make this channel possible. You can join them by following the link below, or, if you're a UK resident, by using that brand spanking new and super shiny Element Games affiliate link in the description. Element Games sell GW and hobby stuff, as well as loads of other cool minis and games, and all at great discounts. I use them all the time, and they always have flawless service. By using that link to get your stuff, you can get your plastic crack and support the channel at no extra cost. If anyone can vouch for and recommend a stateside hobby shop for our American friends, please let me know. Alright, I reckon that's enough from me, let's take a look at how this shady character from Beyond the Void turned out. Nasty stuff indeed. Not your typical Tyranid or Gene Stealer scheme, but there's something about the raw skin meets boiled shrimp look that I quite like on this bad boy. But what do you think? Let me know down below and I will catch you all next time.